moon is an object that exists in our immediate space. For years there have been anomalies recorded such as mysterious lights, flashes, and objects that have been seen by astronomers here on Earth. NASA released a compilation of these recorded reports prior to the first moon mission. As far as the moon is concerned, I think they found when they got up there that there was already somebody there. And I, I wouldn't want to say any more than that. <laughs> but <laughs> they got out of there and they haven't been back. But I have seen certain documents and um, read certain reports that indicate that there's somebody already there that, that knows a lot more than we do and would uh, you know, be willing to run us off if we didn't go on our own. I doubt that we will go to the moon again. It has been argued that the moon could be used as an indicator of extraterrestrial visits to our solar system. Unfortunately, the detection of ET artifacts on the moon is outside the interests of most mainstream archaeologists, as archaeology tends to adhere to a pre-Copernican geocentric point of view. It is generally accepted that the search for alien artifacts on the moon is not necessary because there are none. Given the success in using terrestrial remote sensing to find archaeological sites on Earth, can similar techniques be used to find possible artificial construction on the moon and other planets? For example, the ancient Khorezian fortress Khoi Kala in Uzbekistan, constructed between the 4th century BC to the 1st century AD, appeared as an impact crater before excavation in 1956. On the moon, Khoi Krigankala would not be perceived among all the other impact craters. In 1962, Carl Sagan spoke on the possibility of discovering alien artifacts on the moon, stating that forthcoming photographic reconnaissance of the moon from space vehicles particularly the far side, might bear these possibilities in mind. Rectangular patterns on airspace photos are recognized as signs of human culture in the remote sensing of the Earth and air archaeology. It seems reasonable, then, to search for rectangular patterns on the Moon or on Mars. I walked into the photo lab in the restricted area, and this was between missions. Uh, one of the gentlemen I had been friends with, and I still talk to occasionally, uh, he pointed to one area of this mosaic. It was one panel of a mosaic and with a smile on his face. He said, look over there. And I looked, and in one of the photo panels, uh, I saw a round white dot. 
And at the time, it was very crisp, very sharp lines on it. And I said to him, uh, what, what is that? Is that a dot on the emulsion? And then he's grinning, and he says, uh, dots on the emulsion don't leave round shadows on the ground. And there was a round shadow at the right angle, at the correct angle, the sun shining on the trees. I saw pine trees. I didn't see a coastline. I don't know where this was. And uh, I said, is this a UFO? And he's smiling at me, and he says, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that. What I knew he meant was it was, but he couldn't tell me. So I said, what are you going to do with this information? And he said, well, we always have to airbrush them out before we sell them to the public. In 1965, um, in mid-1965, I was loaned to the Lunar Orbiter Project at NASA on Langley Field. They had problems with a piece of um, electronic equipment that was bottlenecking their production of photographs. Um, I was taken into the laboratory where the equipment was malfunctioning. The uh, Airman Second Class was in the dark room at that time. I was also an Airman Second Class. About 30 minutes into the process, he said to me, in a very distressed way, um, by the way, we've discovered a base on the back side of the moon. And then he proceeded to put photographs down in front of me, and clearly in these photographs were structures, spherical buildings, and towers. airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. ...and showed, showed this base, which had geometric shapes. There were towers, there were uh, spherical uh, buildings, uh, there were very tall uh, towers, and things that looked somewhat like radar dishes, but they were large structures. If I compare it to what I'm seeing now, because I do have photographs that have artifacts in them that are similar to what I saw, they're massive. Some of the structures are, you know, half a mile in, in, in size. So they're, they're huge structures. Uh, some, of the, some of the buildings uh, seem to have uh, very reflective surfaces on them. Uh, some, a couple of structures that I saw reminded me of um, cooling towers at, at uh, power generating plants. They had that sort of a shape. Some of them were, were just very, very straight and tall with a flat top. The particular shot that I saw, there were several clustered together over a landscape, a fairly large landscape. Um, I worked there for three more days, and I remember going home and naively thinking, I can't wait to hear about this on the evening news. And here it is more than 30 years later, and I hope we hear about it tonight. And I will testify under oath before Congress that what I'm saying is the truth.